Hey everyone, this is Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist. Did it, the couple of last videos were about home security, how to harden your current location. This time I'd like to talk a little bit about bugging out and specifically about bug out locations. As soon as you mention bug out locations, people figure out you know, a cabin in the woods, a nice farm, ranch somewhere. Maybe you don't have that, maybe, maybe you don't have the money for that. Maybe the case of many of you guys watching this and you're thinking, yeah, I don't have a, a bug out location. Now, to me, a bug out location is a secure location within reach where you can find shelter for a period of time. That's not nearly as demanding as having a second home. And if you have good friends, family, people you can stay with for, for some time, then maybe indeed you do have a bug out location. It's just a matter of, of uh, say, setting things right, talking about it, and indeed having the knowledge that you can stay there and count on them. If we take this definition apart, we will see that there are some key points. It has to be a secure location, so it has to be a second place. All right, Secure location pretty important. Some people say, I'm already living in my bug out location. You know, guys that have maybe a, um, a cabin, a ranch somewhere, they left the city and moved to their bug out location. So they, they say, I'm already bugged out. And that's, I'm already there. I, I will not need to bug out. I'm already in my bug out location. That's um, um, a huge flaw in, in this strategy because as soon as you are there, it's no longer your bug out location. Because if something affects, if there's a disaster or an incident of any kind that affects that place you're living in right now, then you need to find a second battle location because that's not longer working for you. This I find to be sometimes a little bit of an issue when people invest too much in that place. When all, all efforts, all, all planifications in terms of preparedness are located in, in, in that single place and the, the entire strategy you will have for everything revolves about bugging in. You know, people say, I'm going to be bugging in, I'm not going to be bugging out, I'm already in my retreat. I'm going to be staying there no matter what. Well, if something compromises that, you need a bug out location. You need a second place to go to, a fire, natural disaster, you know. There's so many things, so many uh, causes that may be forcing you out of where you are right now, no matter where that is, no matter how nice, how safe that place is, there's always a possibility of something happening forcing you out of there. So you have to keep that in mind. It has to be a secure place, a, a place that is safe. And here this is quickly taking us to accessibility. It, whatever is affecting your, your current location may be affecting the immediate uh, places around it. All right. Maybe if it's just a fire, you know, a fire in your house, and it's only affecting your place, then maybe you move with family or friends very close, a neighbor, a good neighbor that you have a good relationship with. You can stay there for maybe if it's a fire that requires you know, a, a, maybe a, a couple, a few weeks, a couple of months, maybe at most, and you can stay with with a neighbor of yours in your in your same neighborhood. Then the kids keep going to the same school, you're still close from work, your life is not disrupted nearly as much as moving out of the neighborhood, maybe, maybe moving out of the state entirely. So you soon see that it's important to have different options, not only just have one bug out location, but have several uh, possibilities. One would be closer by, maybe able to reach it just by walking, maybe a second one would be out of the state entirely, maybe another one would be out of the country. That would be a, a more serious event that is affecting the entire country. You know, I'm talking about major situations such as um, you know, civil war, maybe a, a military conflict of some sort, a huge disaster that's affecting your entire country. That sort of thing is going to be forcing you out of the your entire country completely. Moving out of state may be an option. Now, you have to be able to get there. Accessibility is important. And the further away you are, the harder this gets. Ideally, your primary bug out location would be, you would be able to reach it even walking if you're forced to do that. My recommendation is to at least have one bug out location that you can reach with a, a gas tank in your vehicle and of course have the fuel at home already so as to top up your, your gas tank and get there. So you have a couple of jerry cans and you know that with those couple of jerry cans in, in your garage, in your, in your shed, you're able to reach your bug out location. I would not recommend planning on refueling on the way there as uh, we've learned from disasters, actual recent ones like Sandy, it's uh, generally it's not going to be a possibility, especially when it's everyone else bugging out and leaving along with you. 
fuel it, it dries up pretty fast and you, you're actually going to be finding uh, confrontations and problems in gas stations and such so ideally you would be able to reach there with, with a gas tank or even better even walking now this will depend of course on your per, uh, particular scenario your particular uh, situation in my case 33 years old they have a couple of kids uh, a little bit too young maybe but we can walk for a few miles no problem we can actually uh, do that because we do it on on weekends and such now maybe an elderly person that has some sort of disability will not be able to do that so that their plan has to be different from mine they're already counting on, on different things maybe counting more heavily on vehicle as, as transportation and that being their only way of transportation maybe counting on, on some friends or family to help them out it's gonna be different for each one of us alright security is gonna be of course strictly linked to the distance as well and it's gonna be depending on each particular situation if you're if you're bugging out entirely of, of the state, there's a good chance that whatever is affecting your your home is not going to be affecting the, the next state. But again, having more options, having more plans in case of of the, the problem being greater is, of, is of course, better. I get it that lots of guys, and I get this on, on email a lot, I don't have friends or family out of the country. I don't, I can, I don't have anyone. In my experience, based on what I... Uh, read from our guys and such generally they do have someone but they don't have a close relationship with and maybe it's just a matter of you know uh, traveling there you know uh, talking with them again uh, re reviving those uh, relationships working on them improving them and until it gets to a point where you know you can actually have that conversation and this is pretty important you have to be able to stay there for, for a period of time and you have to talk about these things before they happen, all right? Even with family, even with very good friends, uh, you have to actually have that conversation. You know, if something happens, can I go to your place? Can I, can I count on you? You know, that's uh, the kind of conversation you have, you need to do beforehand and say, if, there, if there's ever an event, can I go to your place and stay there for some time until I get back on my feet? yes no that's that's pretty important just don't assume that you will be able to do that with people that you know even with family have that conversation and get that out of the way once that's done then you you already have a, a more a better idea of of your possibilities of staying there for a period of time the thing is that you never know what kind of disaster is going to be affecting you and how much time you're going to be needing maybe it's just a matter of, of a couple of weeks Maybe it's a couple of months. Ideally, it would be a place where you could stay for a longer period of time if needed. Maybe you talk with, with your folks, with your parents, and they have a, a bigger place, a bigger house, and they would be more than happy to take you in for an indefinite period of time until you get back on your feet and figure things out. That would be ideal, uh, um, not having that problem of, of worrying about how much time you're spending there. If you don't have that conversation that I was talking about before, maybe you go to a, a good friend of yours and after a couple of days he tells you, you know, my wife, she's already asking when, when are you guys leaving and such. It's, um, it's more problematic, so it's better to figure those things out ahead of time. Uh, finally, one more thing, if you already have some of these uh, potential bug out locations figured out and maybe you talked, you know, maybe it's, it's an arrangement that you actually made with people you met through the forums, maybe in the gun club, like-minded people and you, you know, it's kind of new friends but you say, okay, look, let's do this. If, there's, uh, if you ever need a bug out location, you can count, count on me. I have a space at home and I'd, I'd be happy to take you in. And you make the arrangements uh, on the other way around as well. If, 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 if something happens to me, can I count with you as well? So it's a, a mutual benefit arrangement uh, just in case. Whatever you end up doing and in these potential bug out locations, once you have that settled, it's not a bad idea to leave some of your your gear, some of your supplies at place. You know, maybe just le leaving a few things, uh, uh, some uh, some clothes, a little bit of food, some money, a, a firearm, it will all depend on what you're working with in your uh, particular scenario. But leaving a little bit of, of supplies there already is going to be making it uh, easier. Sometimes when you are bugging out, you just cannot take anything. Sometimes there's just uh, 
you just leave with what's on you, on your pajamas, on your clothes that you have, it will depend. Sometimes you do have a little bit more time, but don't, don't ever count on it. You know, at least have a little bag with your, your passport, some money, your documents, your important papers, a uh, zip drive that is um, encrypted with a, a copy of, of your more, more important files and information. And that little bag is, you know, if you only have a minute, you just grab that. Then you have, of course, your bug out bags. And don't, again, don't count on having more and more time to just fill your, your, your 4x4, your pickup truck full of stuff and leaving. If you can do that, then that's great. If not, uh, assume that you will have very little time to leave. So folks, that's basically it. Some more stuff. As always, remember that any comments, suggestions, or things that you want me to cover later on, just leave that in the comment section. So I'll be, I'll be glad to do that as well later on. And if you're liking these videos, consider subscribing. The button is over there. Guys, have a great weekend. Take care and see you on our next video.